Today we are going to discuss the RCVD, which is randomized complete block design. So this is a type of experimental design. And in the previous lecture, we had studied CRD, which is completely randomized design, which is the most basic type of the experimental designs. And CRD, as we had discussed, is applied under the conditions where the sources of variation other than treatment, they are minimum. So that is possible mostly in the lab conditions where environmental conditions can be kept homogeneous. But in case of field conditions where uh, the local control cannot be exercised uh, that precisely, so for that purpose, the randomized complete block design is adopted if there is a significant source of variation. RCBD is the most widely used experimental design in field research, right? So RCBD, which is com uh, randomized complete block design, it is mostly used in field research and it is um, a different from CRD and the private distinguishing feature of RCBD from CRD is the presence of blocks of equal size and each block contains all treatments. So in case of CRD, if you remember, we discussed that there is no such blocking and um, the treatments wherever they are present into, into the field or wherever those are located in the lab, they all have equal chances of receiving any kind of a treatment. And that is the reason, and that is possible because the environmental conditions around each of these sampling units, around each of these experimental units are same. But in case of RCBD, this is not designed um, in whole of the field at random. Rather, the field is divided into different blocks and then treatments are applied at random within those blocks, right? So each block is going to have uh, all the treatments and those treatments are applied randomly within each block. So what is the purpose of blocking? That why we are making these blocks? Well, in case of CRD, we only have one block that all the experimental units that are present within the block and the treatments are assigned randomly. But in case of RCBD, what we are doing is that the entire field is going to be divided into different blocks and then the treatments are going to be assigned in each of these blocks randomly. So each block is going to have all of the treatments. So what is the purpose of uh, this blocking? Why this, uh, these blocks are made? So the purpose of blocking is to reduce the experimental error, right? So how this reduces the experimental error? It reduces experimental error by eliminating a known source of variation among experimental units other than treatment. So in case of CRD, we saw that there are only those nuisance factors that cannot be controlled and they are a minimum and those are exerting their influence and they, they contribute to the experimental error. But in this case in the field, if we have a source of variation which is known and that source of variation is significant effect is significant enough to uh, to have an effect on the um, um, on the experiment so to counter the effect of that uh, source of variation we need to make blocks right so the purpose of blocking is to reduce the um, experimental error by eliminating a known source of variation among experimental units other than treatment so in case of RCBD, the experimental units are grouped into blocks according to known or suspected source of variation, right? So the known source of variation, it may exist in the form of a gradient in one direction. That is uh, the effect of this uh, source of variation could be maximum in one side of the field and it reduces as we go on to the other side of the field. So it may be present in the form of a gradient in one direction. So it becomes easier to isolate the source of variation with the help of blocks, right? So if there is a significant source of variation other than treatment, which is present in the field, and if that source of variation is present in the form of a gradient, then we can apply RCBD effectively to see the effect of that source of variation as well, right? So in that case, we are going to apply RCBD. So the conditions that are the source of variation, they are as homogeneous as possible within blocks, but they may differ greatly between the blocks, right? So what is the purpose of blocking? That we are making the blocks to reduce the, um, the source of variation other than treatment, right? So within each block, the conditions are kept homogeneous, right? But the same conditions are going to be different among different blocks because the blocks are made according to the gradient of this known source of variation, right? 
so that uh, block that is present in the in that part of the gradient where the effect is maximum so that is going to have a more effect of that source of variation right while the block which is away from uh, which is in the other corner of the gradient of the known source of variation that is going to have uh, the minimum effect of that source of variation so the effect of this source of variation it is going to differ between different blocks but because we have got all the treatments into each of the blocks so we can effectively analyze the effects of the source of variation as well as the effects of the treatments right but within a block the conditions which cause experimental error they are as homogeneous as possible right and each block has got all treatments so the source of variation other than treatment can be corrected so each block uh, is going to have only effective source of variation as the treatments only because the rest of the conditions they are kept as homogeneous as possible and even within a block the significant source of variation that is other than the treatments so that is also homogeneous within uh, one block right so each of the block that is that is going to have the conditions as homogeneous as possible while different blocks there they may differ in these conditions so that is how we can correct this source of variation. So in RCBD, the blocks are made and then treatments are assigned at random within each block so that there is complete randomization within a block. So this is the main difference of RCBD from CRD that in CRD, we take the entire field as such and then the treatments are applied at random on the experimental units present in that field. But in case of RCBD, what we do is that we first make blocks according to the gradient of the known source of variation, and then treatments are assigned within these blocks. So each block is going to have all the treatments, and these treatments are assigned at random. So there is a complete randomization within a block. Hence, the name of this, this design is randomized complete block design, right? So first the blocks are made and then randomization is done within a block. So each block has got a separate randomization and this is one of the most widely used designs in field. And this is a flexible design because it allows any number of treatments and any number of blocks, right? So I'm going to repeat uh, this uh, once again that in RCBD, the blocks are made first, like the field is divided into different blocks. And then within each block, the treatments are assigned and each block has its own randomization. So remember one thing that each block is going to have all of the treatments. And the second thing is that these treatments, they're assigned at random within each block, right? So this is RCBD. So in case of RCBD, the long and narrow blocks are designed and the length of the blocks is perpendicular to the direction of gradient. And if there are two sources of variation that occur in a gradient, then we have to use another type of experimental design, which is a Latin square design, right? So RCBD is useful only if we have uh, one significant source of variation other than treatment. Example, effects of fertilizer dose on the fresh weight of plants. The experimental design is RCBD. Independent variable is the fertilizer doses, and the treatments are different doses of fertilizer. And let's suppose we have eight treatments, A to H. And then the dependent or the response variable is the fresh weight of plants. So fresh weight of plants is measured after six months of planting to see the effect of fertilizer in field trial. So let's suppose there is a river on one side of this field. So the soil near the river is more moist as uh, compared to the soil away from the river. And this source of variation is present in the form of a gradient because there is more effect of the river uh, on the soil which is near to the river and this effect decreases as we move away from the river. This is uh, a graphical description. So let's suppose this is our field, the square is our field, and we have a river on one side, and the soil moisture is going to reduce as we move away from the river. So because the uh, plant growth is related to water content of the soil, 
So therefore, this is a significant source of variation that may affect the, um, the growth of the plants. So that is why we are going to make blocks in this field to reduce the effect of this river gradient. In this way, right? You can see that the soil mo moisture is present in the form of a gradient. So we are going to make blocks according to this gradient. And you can see that we have made three blocks, right? So in block number one, there is maximum effect of the river. In block number two, there is intermediate effect of the river. And in block three, there is minimum effect of the river. So this is how we make the blocks. And by comparing these blocks, we can find out the effect of river on the fresh weight of plants. And our source of variation of interest is, of course, treatments, which are the doses of fertilizer. And we have eight treatments. And each of the block is going to have all treatments in this one, right? So the block number A with maximum moisture uh, effect, with maximum river effect, is going to have all the treatments, right? And then block number two, which is going to have an intermediate effect of the river gradient, that is also going to have all of the treatments at random. And then the third block, which is going to have the minimum effect of the river gradient, so that block is also going to have the treatments. So we can do a two-way ANOVA that we can compare the effect of the blocks and we can also compare the effects of the treatments. So this is how the blocks are made to reduce the effect of this significant source of variation which is present other than treatment. So within each block, the soil moisture, moisture effect is kept constant and the treatments vary, right? So within each block, as we discussed previously, that within each block, the environmental conditions or the conditions which are the source of variation other than treatment, so those conditions are as homogeneous as possible. And as you can see in these blocks, that these blocks, they differ from each other, but within a block, the effect of the soil moisture, which is the source of variation, uh, that is uniform, right? So within each of the block, the effect is homogeneous, the effect is uniform, the effect varies from block to block, but with, within a block, that effect is constant. And the treatments vary because each block is going to have all of the treatments. So therefore, treatments are variable within a block, but the um, environmental conditions or the experimental error sources of variation, they are same within each block. So this is the purpose of making um, blocks, and this is how RCBD or the randomized complete block design is made. So here we have these blocks and treatments. So we have three blocks to eliminate the river gradient, which is our source of variation. And we have eight treatments, which is our source of variation of interest. And each block has got all the treatments. And within each block, there is complete randomization of treatments. So you can see in these um, squares, in these cells, that each of these has got a treatment. Each of these are different experimental units. And there are three blocks and there are eight treatments. So within each block, there is complete randomization of the treatments that any experimental unit has got chance of receiving any of the treatment, has equal chance of receiving any of the treatments. And then all the treatments are present within each block. So block number one has all the eight treatments. Block number two also has all the eight treatments. And block number three also has all the eight treatments. So this is how RCBD is done. And this is a flexible design. You can have uh, any number of blocks and you can have any number of treatments. But the thing is that you have to make blocks according to the gradient of this source of variation. And the other thing is that all of the treatments, they must be present within each block. And the assignment of treatments should be at random within each block. So if you meet these conditions, then you're going to have a perfect experimental design for your field research. And the results of the RCBD, they can be effectively analyzed through ANOVA. And in this case, we have three sources of variability in RCBD treatment, which is variation of interest and block, which is unavoidable variation. But we have um, made our design in such a way 
that we are going to calculate the effect of this variation alone. And then we have the variation which is uh, inherent, which is the experimental error. So total variability in this case is going to be the variability due to treatments, variability because of the blocks, and variability because of the experimental error, right? So variability due to treatments is the variability <clears throat> in the response of experimental units, which is because of the different treatments they receive, right? And they, they are going to receive, in this example, they are going to receive eight treatments. So the variability between these eight treatments is the variability of treatment. And then variability of block, this is to, uh, to uh, calculate the effect of the source of variation, which was not of our interest, but this was present in the field. So by making these blocks, like we have made three blocks, so by comparing the results of these three blocks, we can calculate the effect of this variation. And then the variability, which is due to experimental error. So this is the variability which is present in, uh, which is produced as a result of those extraneous factors that cannot be avoided, but their effect is kept minimum. So we have these uh, three sources of uh, variation and the total variability is the sum of all these sources of variation. So this is the design of ANOVA that we are going to have. So we can see that there is one more uh, than CRT. And this is the data which has been obtained after the experiment. So this is fresh weight of plants under different doses of fertilizer. As you can see, there, there are three blocks and each of the block has all the treatments and then we have the treatment total like the a right the row uh, number the, the row which starts from treatment a that has got the results of treatment a which is 103.96 this is the sum of that treatment a then we have 94.6 which is the sum of treatment b and then we have 97.53, which is the sum of treatment C. Then we have 95.76, which is the sum of treatment D. Then we have 66.35, which is the sum of treatment E. Then we have 89.71, which is the sum of treatment F. Then we have 69.47, which is the sum of treatment G. And then we have 92.38, which is the sum of treatment H. Likewise, you can see that we have the mean values. So 34.65 grams is the mean value of treatment A, and we have calculated the mean values of rest of the treatments as well, right? So in the columns, you can see the uh, total values for blocks. So the block total for the first block is 221.15. The block total for the second one is 228.02. And the block total for the third one is 260.59. And the grand total is 709.76. And the grand mean is 29.57. So this is the result of our experiment. Now we have to analyze this result. So for ANOVA, we have the SS total equal to SS treatment, the sum of scares blocks, and sum of scares experimental error. So for the sake of simplicity, we can designate total by capital T small o, treatment by small t, blocks by small v, and experimental error by small e, right? So this is the principle of our ANOVA that we are going to use in RCBD. So first of all, we have to calculate the correction term. And this is the formula for correction term that this is summation x total whole square divided by nb into nt. So the uh, total sum, the grand total is 709.76. So we take the square of this value. And then we have 3, which is the number of blocks, and 8, which is the number of treatments. So we have CT as 20,989.97. So this is the value of the correction term that we have calculated. Now we calculate the sum of squares total. And the formula for this one is summation x to square minus ct. So for that purpose, we have to take the 
uh, square of all the individual values. So how many values do we have? We have 24 values. So we are going to take the square of each of these values and then we are going to take their sum. So, and then we, take, we divide their sum, sorry, we subtract their sum by correction term and we get our sum of squares total, which in this case is 678.42, right? So this is our sum of squares total. Now we have to calculate sum of squares treatment. And for that purpose, how many treatments do we have? We have eight treatments. And for each treatment, you can see that we have to divide the summation x whole square by the number of observations in that treatment. So, and then we take their sum and then we subtract that with CT. So this is how we have these values and our sum of squares treatment is 426.45. Now we calculate the sum of squares blocks and how many blocks do we have? We have three blocks. So we are going to calculate a value for each of the block, the value of uh, summation x whole square by, divided by the number of observations. And then we are going to take their sum and subtract that sum from correction term. So this is how we do it. And our sum of squares blocks is 110.98. And now we have to calculate the sum of squares error. And because the total sum of squares is equal to sum of squares treatment, sum of squares blocks, and sum of squares error. And because uh, we have calculated the sum of squares total, we have calculated the sum of squares treatment, and we have calculated the sum of squares block. So we can work out the value of sum of squares error, experimental error from there. So the sum of squares error is equal to the sum of squares total minus the sum of sum of squares B and sum of squares T. So this is our formula to calculate the sum of squares error. And here we have the value, which is 140.98. So this is the value of our sum of squares for error. So now we have calculated all the four sum of squares. So next we are going to calculate their degrees of freedom. So here we calculate the degrees of freedom. So total degree of freedom is B into T minus one. So B is the number of blocks and T is the number of treatments. So we have three blocks and eight treatments. So three multiplied by eight, which is 24 minus one is 23. So our total degree of freedom is 23. And then we have the treatment degree of freedom, which is the number of treatments minus one, which in this case is seven. And then we have the block degree of freedom, which is the number of blocks minus one, which is two in this case. And then we have the error degree of freedom. And for the error degree of freedom, we take the product of B minus one and T minus one. So B is uh, three in this case, so three minus one, and the T is eight in this case, the number of treatments. So eight minus one, so two multiplied by seven is equal to 14. So this is how we calculate the degrees of freedom. So 23 is the degree of freedom for total, and uh, 7 is the degree of freedom for treatment, 2 is the degree of freedom for block, and 14 is the degree of freedom for error. Now we calculate their uh, variance, which is their mean sum of squares, and the formula is sum of squares divided by the degree of freedom. So first of all, the treatment, so the MST is equal to SST divided by DFT, and in this case, this is 426.45 divided by seven, and we have 60.92 as the MS treatment. And then we have to calculate the variance due to blocks. And this is the sum of squares B and divided by the degree of freedom blocks. So we have 110.98 divided by two. So we have 55.49. So this is our MS due to blocks. And then we have the variance due to the experimental error. So this is sum of squares experimental error divided by degree of freedom experimental error. So here we have 140.98 divided by 14. So we have 10.07. So we have calculated the variances, the mean sum of squares, and now we have to calculate their F values. So we calculate the F values. 
and the first F value we are going to calculate is of the treatments because that is the main source of variation of our interest. So this is calculated by dividing the variance of treatment by variance of experimental error, which in this case is 60.92 divided by 10.07, and the answer is 6.05. So 6.05 is the F value for our treatments. And we can see that this is higher than one, but we will have to check through the F distribution table that whether this is significantly higher than one or no. Then other uh, major source of variation, which was although not our source of variation of interest, but still it was present in the field. And we had uh, made our experimental design in such a way that we are going to calculate the effect of that source of variation as well. And that source of variation is uh, divided into different blocks. So we are going to calculate the F value for blocks as well. So the F value for blocks is the variance due to blocks divided by variance due to experimental error. So this is 55.49 divided by 10.07 and the answer is 5.51. And we can see that this F value is also greater than F. But again, we'll have to see the F critical values to find out if this is significantly greater than one or no. So here we have calculated the F values for the two major sources of variation, the variation due to treatment, which is the source of variation of our interest, and the source of variation due to blocks. And this source of variation due to blocks is because of the presence of the river gradient in the field. And here we have our ANOVA table, our results table, and the tabled F values or the critical F values are given for both of the um, F values that we have uh, calculated. So here we have for the treatments. So the treatment calculated value is 6.05. And we can see that the tabled F value is 2.76 at probability of 0 0.05. So this one is greater than that. Now let's see at the next one. So the next one is 4.28 and we can see that our calculated value is also greater than this critical value. So we see the next one, which is 7.08. But here we can see that our calculated value is less than the critical value. So our F value for treatments is significant, but this is significant at 0 0.01 level. So the probability of this value to be significant is uh, sorry, um, the probability of our null hypothesis to be true is less than 0 0.01, which means that there is a highly significant effect of treatments on the fresh weight of plants. Then we see our next uh, F value, which is 5.51, which is the effect of the blocks, which was due to the river gradient. And we can see the first value is uh, 3.74, and we can see that our F value is greater than this one. So we can see that there is a significant effect of the river gradient. Now we see the next uh, level as 6.52 is a critical value, but we can see that our F value is, our calculated F value is less than this critical value. So we can see that the effect of the blocks is uh, significant, but this is not highly significant. So let's move on to the results. Here we have the results. So our result is there is highly significant effect of fertilizer on the fresh weight of plants. So F value at seven and 14 degrees of freedom, seven is the degree of freedom for treatments and 14 is the degree of freedom for error. So the F value is 6.04 and the probability is less than 0 0.01. And our other result is there is significant effect of river on the fresh weight of plants. The F value at degrees of freedom of 2 and 14, 2 is the degree of freedom for blocks, and 14 is the degree of freedom for error. So the F value is 5.51, and the probability is less than 0 0.05. So here we can see that the effect of treatments is stronger. It is highly significant. But uh, we can also see that there is also an effect of the river, and that effect is also significant. But because we designed our experiment in a way that uh, we were able to isolate the effect of this river gradient, so therefore we can uh, completely mm, rely on our result for the treatments that there is a very highly significant effect of fertilizer dose on the fresh weight of plants. So this is how RCBD is done.